Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I am super excited to share today's video with you guys because it is the second video in my series of exploring the arrondissements 1 through 20 in Paris. We kicked off this series last week with, of course, the premier arrondissement, so I will link that below if you haven't seen it. And today we will be continuing the series with the second arrondissement of Paris. Listen, you don't even know how excited I am to take you guys to the second arrondissement. There are so many things to do. It's so beautiful. The ambiance is amazing. And it's crazy because I feel like so much attention is given to the first arrondissement because of all the cool museums and monuments. And I feel like the second arrondissement kind of just like gets left to the side. So I hope in today's video I can show you guys how amazing the second arrondissement is and to encourage you to visit this neighborhood if you guys are traveling to Paris. This arrondissement is pretty trendy. It has lots and lots of good restaurants and bars. One of the most popular clubs is also in this arrondissement. So yeah, not only is it a really cool and fun place to explore during the day, but you can party on through the night and enjoy the nightlife in this area as well. Like I mentioned in my first video, I'm gonna be doing two videos for every arrondissement. The first video is going to be a little vlog-like video where I'm gonna take you and explore the arrondissement like a local would. And then the second video will focus more on the historical side of the arrondissement. So I don't really wanna go into the history of the second arrondissement in this video. I will have a completely separate video for that if you're interested, but I do just wanna quickly go through some things that we will see in this arrondissement. There are two main things that I think this arrondissement is characterized by. The first point, which is what I was talking about before, is the restaurants and the bars and sort of the foodie culture. There's a street that I'm gonna take you guys to, it's called Rue Montorgueil. It's very aesthetic. You have all sorts of beautiful shops, épicerie, boulangerie, restaurants, bars, and a lot of them come out onto the sidewalk and to the street. They're not like shops with closed fronts. I'll, I'll show you guys later, but it definitely does give off like modern market vibes, I guess. And then the second thing that this neighborhood is sort of known for are its little secret indoor passageways. These covered shopping arcades are kind of like old school malls. From the little bit of research that I've done, these were very popular places to come and do your shopping in the 19th century. And as time went on, they became a lot less popular. Most of them got destroyed, but there are a good portion of them in the second arrondissement, which we will be visiting today. Before we head out, I wanted to show you guys the map of the second arrondissement. Um, and I have pinpointed 10 areas that we will stop by. So I wanna give an idea of the route that we'll be taking today. Let me just grab my notes. If you remember from the first arrondissement video, we did a quick spin around the Bourse de Commerce and Châtelet Les Halles. And so the second arrondissement is just above Les Halles. And like the first arrondissement, it is on Rive Droite, which is the right side of the Seine. We're going to start at the metro station Bonne Nouvelle, and we are going to first go to the Grand Rex, which is the biggest theater in Europe, and also an amazing nightclub. Then we're gonna make our way down Boulevard Poissonnière to a pretty popular brunch spot called Sunday in Soho. I've never been, but I thought it'd be cool to walk by. I'm always looking for new brunch spots, and so if it looks good, if the menu looks good, then I might drag my girlfriends there one weekend. We're then gonna take a left to Rue du 4 Septembre, and we're going to go to the uh, Paris Stock building, the Stock Exchange. I don't know, the Bourse de Paris. We're gonna take a quick spin around there. I think the building is pretty cute, so why not add it to our itinerary? We're then going to go to two different passages. We have Passage Choiseul and Galerie Vivienne. Both of which I've heard are stunning, so that should be exciting. We're then going to go to Rue du Nil, which apparently is a foodie heaven. We'll see about that. We're then gonna make our way to Rue Montorgueil. Uh, this is the street I was telling you about with those like market vibes. And also my favorite thrift shop is in this area. So we're gonna swing by Emmaüs Alternative. On the street is also the oldest pâtisserie in Paris called Stroher. I really wanna take you guys there and check it out because the pâtisseries look 
amazing and it could be interesting to try one. And then we're gonna wrap up our tour of the second arrondissement with two more passages. We had Passage du Grand Cerf and Passage de la Trinité. So voila, that is our itinerary. I am so, so excited to show you guys this arrondissement. But without further ado, let's do a quick outfit check and then we'll head to the metro. Voila, so uh, a bit more of a casual vibe today. We have an oversized sort of thermal button up, um, which I'm wearing with leggings. I don't know if you can see. Um, and also my new platform Converse. But yeah, that's the look. That is also enough talking. Let's go and explore Paris. just got out of the metro and over here we have the Grand Rex so over there where all those people are like lining up is the theater obviously like the movie theater and then that red part is the club <laughs> so we have daytime activities and evening activities <laughs> So yeah, that was the Grand Rex. Um, admittedly, I've never been there for the theater. I've only been there for the club. Um, I actually went there for Halloween, so I have vivid memories of walking around this neighborhood at like 5 a.m. because the metro wasn't open. Um, but yeah, the club was fun. It was techno vibes if you're into that. But I definitely want to check out the theater at some point. It looks really, really fancy, and I didn't know that it was the biggest one in Europe, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, we're gonna make our way down the Rue Poissonnière to Sunday in Soho, check out the vibe of that brunch place, and then we'll head to the first passage. <laughs> Okay, so we're taking a two minute break. I'm at the Bourse. I'm at the Bourse. And I don't understand, I'm like, why is this on the must see list of the second half only small? So I go up to the security guard and I'm like, can I visit? And they're like, no. And I'm like, really? Why? And he's like, I don't know. You just can't. I'm like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> And I walk away and the security guards were just like, what is this girl doing? Like, I'm supposed to know you can't visit. But I mean, it's a really pretty building. You just can't visit, I guess. I don't know. Just before this, I walked by Sunday in Soho. The treats looked so good. You would have seen the clip. Um, there was a bit of a line, but honestly not that bad. And it definitely looked really cute. So yeah, if you're looking for a good brunch spot, then maybe that's a good place to try out. But that whole area in general was like very foodie. There were tons of bars, restaurants, cafes, bistros. It definitely looks like a fun place to go for food or drinks. Now that we're done with our quick spin around the books, we're gonna go to the first passage, which is the Passage Soissons. Okay, we made it. Next passage, Galerie Vivienne. 
Le ventre creux, nous nécessions d'y croire quand quelques bistrots Contre apport et pas chaud, nous prenait une étoile Nous récitions de verre, groupés autour du poil en oubliant l'hiver La bohème Okay, so we just left the second passage, Galerie Vivienne, and I hope you could have seen through all the videos, but oh my goodness, I don't even have the words for how beautiful it was. Like, the hanging lights were just so special, and the stores were so unique, and the cafes, and the restaurants, and the bistros were just super cute. So honestly, if you're looking for like a little date spot in Paris, I would definitely recommend that you check out the Galerie Vivienne. I was honestly just so amazed with how beautiful of a place it was. Anyways, we're gonna put the passages on hold. We're gonna make our way to Rue du Nil, which apparently is one of the foodie hotspot locations of the second arrondissement. but it says Marché Montorgueil. Let's go! Qui nous servent de nid, ne payez pas de mine. C'est là qu'on s'est connu, moi qui criais famine, et toi qui posais nu. La bohème. Hi you guys, future Ariel here. The reason why you're seeing future me in this moment is because as soon as I got to Rue Montorgueil, there was just way too many people and I couldn't find space to narrate what I was doing or walk you through the places that I was going. So I took a bunch of clips while I was there, I made some notes, and hopefully now I can walk you through exactly what I was doing and the cool places you should check out as we're playing this video. Before we jump in, I want you guys to consider Rue Montorgueil like the trunk of a tree. And there are all sorts of little streets that stem from Rue Montorgueil. And we're gonna talk about a couple today, but really when you visit this area, don't limit yourself to that one street. Take the time to go left and right because there are lots of little nooks and crannies that are really, really interesting. Once I got about halfway down Rue Montorgueil, one of the first streets I turned on to was Rue Lépold Bélan. If you guys have seen my video on the best thrift shops in Paris, you will know that one of my favorite thrift shops is on this street. It's like literally 20 meters off of Rue Montorgueil and it's called the Rosocerie Alternative and it's one of the MIUS thrift shops. Highly recommend. So that was sort of the first thing I did when I got to this area. Then I got back on Rue Montorgueil and I went down further and I went into the oldest boulangerie in Paris called, let me get this right, Stoher. La bohème. La bohème. Nous ne mangeons qu'un jour. I 
actually bought myself a little treat. I bought myself one of my favorite pastries, which is a millefeuille. After I picked up my pastry, I kept going down Rue Montorgueil until I got to the street called Rue Tiquetonne, and this is to the left. I really like this street and I definitely recommend that you head down it if you come to this area because I think there are really, really interesting restaurants and cafes and stores. If you're into thrifting, the store called Episode is on this street and it's super popular. as something to check out if you're into thrifting and you're in this area. Now, if you keep going down the street, you'll eventually get to Rue Saint-Denis, which is kind of parallel to Rue Montorgueil. Once I got to Rue Saint-Denis, I turned up just so that I could go to the two remaining passages and also check out the restaurants and the stores. Because again, remember what I was saying about the whole tree and branch effect. It's not just Rue Montorgueil that is really interesting. It's other streets in and around with really, really cool shops and restaurants and cafes. There are also especially a lot of really, really cool bars and like trendy places to go out for drinks um, in and around Rue Saint-Denis. So definitely check this out if you're in this area in the evening. <laughs> There's also another thrift shop that you should check out called Cheap Frip Vintage. And also sort of springing off of Rue Saint-Denis is the Passage du Grand Cerf and Passage La Trinité. Passage du Grand Cerf was definitely really cool. On the other hand, Passage de la Trinité, I don't know why this is on people's blogs, but it is legitimately just this kind of sketchy, dark looking Passage. There was one really cute hidden restaurant, which I actually might go back to, but it definitely was not worth any sort of hype. So this brings us to the end of the video, exploring the second arrondissement of Paris. Time for our rose and thorn of this arrondissement to end the video. Honestly, I have so many roses. I think the first one that I wanna mention is the Galerie Vivienne. That passage is truly one of the most beautiful and magical places I've seen in Paris. I would definitely recommend that you check this out. Definitely take your time and go to a cafe or a bistro in this area. It really does feel so special. And I will keep it to two roses, but the second one I definitely wanted to mention was Rue du Nil. I had never been there before despite like being in that area so often and the restaurants look really cool. The boulangerie especially, oh my goodness, as soon as you turn down the street, you can smell it from like 200 meters away. It just smelled so delicious. There were also several restaurants on the street that I really wanna go back and try. I'm definitely gonna drag my girlfriends back to this area to eat because you can go for dinner and then you can like literally wiggle your way through Rue Montorgueil and then onto Rue Saint-Denis and go out for drinks after and make a whole night of it. Big rose, can't wait to go back and definitely recommend that you check out Rue du Nil if you're in this area. Now my thorn, hmm. I think I probably have two thorns as well. The first thorn is how dang busy Rue Montorgueil always is. No matter the weekend, if you go on a Saturday or a Sunday, Rue Montorgueil will be jam packed with people and it definitely feels overwhelming at times. The rest of the second arrondissement was really great. It wasn't too busy. It wasn't like the premier arrondissement where every single inch of that area was busy. But yeah, it definitely felt really overwhelming when I turned onto Rue Montorgueil. It's a lot less busy if you go on like a weeknight evening. My second thorn has nothing to do with this arrondissement, but the fact that I did this video alone, I wish that I had brought a friend or just someone to sort of enjoy all the places that I was seeing. This arrondissement really felt very magical, very Parisian, and I wish I had been with someone to sort of 
sit down and take a moment and enjoy all of the cool restaurants that I was going by or go into some of the boutiques that I was seeing. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely nice to spend time wandering the streets of Paris by yourself because it will be fun either way, but sometimes it's just nice to share that moment with someone. Overall, today was amazing. I love this Alani Small. Please let me know down below if there are any things I missed of the second Alani Small or if you plan on visiting this area in Paris. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.